Hello very users, Alex here, your very guide, and we continue with our VFX for our biz video samples. Today we're gonna check out how we can do this a really cool water shower with global illumination and we're going to render it by using V-Ray GPU. So let's go dive in. I'm gonna show you some cool tricks along the way, how we can render it really quickly and simulate it at the photorealistic level. All right, so I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna open my Max. As you can see here, I have seen that it's contained from boxes and I have two walls. However, my camera is standing outside. So there's a little trick for uh, this. If we go to the object properties, we can untick visible from camera. And this way the wall will be rendered, but we will be able to see through. So let's put it display as box so we can also visually see through this. And I'm gonna do the same to the walls so they will not interrupt. So basically this is what I have. And uh, I also have, if I select my camera and put the save frame, I also have two keys, one on frame zero and one on frame 100. And I have this very smooth camera move with a little bit of rotation to the side in order to have this kind of 3d effect of the water okay those of course i'm going to teach you how to do during the upcoming workshop but today let's just concentrate on our simulation and again for this one we're going to use this cool preset called tap water it's really easy to use so it says us uh, tell us that we need to select our object before we apply it so let's open this group i'm going to select my shower nozzles and while those selected i can click on that tap water and the simulator being created here and it's connected to my liquid so at the liquid let's do first 50 ongoing velocity so it will throw our water down and let's get some noise to the water right here and uh, polygon ID let's put it on a sec and two so we'll be able to work with this water and do some color corrections to it later on now regarding our simulator let's move it all the way down and adjust it in order to match our shower so something like this and we can even make it a little bit smaller because we don't need to be to have it that wide. So somewhere here, 75, 85, which is going to be fine. Now let's go back to our camera and select our uh, shower here. And if we start simulating it, we can see that the water comes down straight down but somehow you can see it's kind of attached and doesn't come from all the nozzles so uh, let's stop it and do some adjustments to the water simulation so make sure it's jammed booth so it will be inside Let's give this scale size one and the cell size, let's do 25. So we get really high count of uh, cells, 25 millions. It's a pretty good size to this. Now let's do our stepper frame 10. And here, on the rendering output let's make sure that everything is correct I'm going to actually disconnect this particle view so I don't have to see it and I'm going to show mesh is on the velocity here is on basically the rest can stay by default as long as we have our steps per frame set to number 10 right here okay 
So I'm going to delete this. And uh, let's go back and start simulating it. Now we need to get a little bit better quality. And we need to get those this water running straight from all of those nostrils. They will not be kind of combined together. So um, they will have very nice and isolated straight down motion. Okay. So I'm going to leave it for a little bit just to get the simulation done. Uh, let's see how we're doing on the timing here. Estimated about 17, 16 minutes. So let's uh, let it run through the entire 100 frames. And then I'm going to show you how we can do render of those. All right, guys. And the render was done. It took 23 minutes. Um, but we finally rendered our simulation and this stuff is looking good. We're having motion in the camera. We have a nice flow in our water. The texture of the water is the same texture that I used for uh, my swim pool last time. I think I showed you guys. So it's got to be black on the diffuse, white on reflect, uh, refract completely white. And of course the IOR is 1.33 that's the index of refraction for the water All right so now let me show you how we can render this i'm going to open my render dialog and uh, as you can see here i'm using v-ray gpu for this and let's change from single to active segments so we're going to render from 0 to 100 uh, let's save our water to the destinations. You can see I rendered JPEG, but um, if you want to have something more quality than that, you can save TIFFs, you can save PNGs, you can save OpenXRs if you want to do it very professionally, but then you're going to have to have Nuke or some other plugin to extrude the uh, passes from your OpenXR, okay, if you have any. Now, for my um, version here, I did add a denoiser. So you can click here and add denoiser pass. That's what I'm using here in order to smooth my results. So if we go back to our rendering parameters, we're going to use for GI light cache. So basically, this method uses light cache, light cache, something that I was using in our fly through uh, workshop fly through animation workshop for interiors it's a very good method you're gonna get a little grain but with the noiser you can remove that and basically the grain problem solved okay so here those are the high quality rendering settings as you can see here leak prevention point eight all those parameters I'm gonna leave it to our upcoming workshop I'm going to explain I'm not gonna go into detail but I'm just gonna give you a quick run here that you can use those in order to have so sample limit I'm gonna give it 5,000 and uh, noise limit let's reduce it because 0.05 it's gonna run for a long time so let's put it 0.01 and I also like to use this trick where I limit in the minutes. So if you have a strong computer, you can try those settings and let it run. If it runs over 10 minutes and you want to render 100 frames, it's going to take a lot of time. So what I like to do is just put 5 minutes and limit it to 5 minutes per frame. That way, I'm going to squeeze as much possible quality out of the image and then the noise are going to kick in. And polish everything up and we're gonna have a very clear render so let me show you uh, this one here as you can see uh, it's pretty clean we don't get any flickering any jittering we don't get any noise around here because we do use the noiser in order to uh, have it very nice and clean polished looking metals and, and all the 
materials and textures and everything and also very nice and soft shadows here so let me just open one image and we can see that it's pretty clear here so this is something you have to go and experiment this is related to your computer how much quality you actually want to get from that um, you might get a little bit better settings if you want to increase and have much better quality you can go here to 0 0.05 and the samples limit you can put 50,000 and then just let it run see how long it takes if it takes uh, an hour or so you know you have an idea which parameters how low you can go in order to get the compromise between the quality and the rendering times okay so this stuff is all going to be in depth in the upcoming training and we're gonna go and see more cool features that came out with VRNX 2.0 update as you can see those simulations take a little bit time but you can create an amazing demo reel that actually can help you find better jobs better projects and basically put you on the pro level among all of those companies that you're working with or trying to get into some professional company if you show something uh, like this which got really cool VFX it immediately puts you in a professional category so stay tuned more stuff is coming up this is Alex your very guy